In this video, I'll be testing this Teton Sports Mountain Ultra one-person tent against some pretty heavy rain. Before rain testing, I wanted to check all the waterproofing features of this tent. Inside the tent, I found that most of the seams were not taped, like the flooring to mesh seam was not taped and these vertical seams were also not taped. The only seams inside the tent that were taped were the seams on the flooring, especially at the corners and I found this seam taping to be really quite thorough. Obviously, this makes sense because the flooring comes into contact with lots of water, so it has to be taped. And the rest of the tent is covered by the rainfly, so the rest of the seams don't need to be. I also checked the rainfly and found that all the seams were taped on the rainfly, so it should be good enough. I also noticed that the bathtub flooring was only about 5 inches for the longer length of the tent, while it was 10 inches for the shorter width of the tent. I think this is because the longer length has more rainfly protection, and the rainfly is pulled away from the tent body. As for the shorter width of the tent, the rainfly is practically right up close to the tent body, and there isn't a stake loop here to pull it away. So, it's forecasted to rain pretty heavily, and I'm going to leave this Mountain Ultra one-person tent out to rain test it. Here's what the heavy rain test looked like. It rained like this for about an hour, and after that, the rain became more of a moderate rain, which looked like this. The top of the tent is kind of flat, so I was worried that there would be a pooling issue, but luckily, it wasn't too much of an issue for me. I also left this rainfly vent at the back of the tent open to test whether any rain would get into the tent from this vent. One thing I really liked about this tent is that the rainfly doesn't extend all the way to the ground, and I could feel a little bit of ventilation from the inside of the tent even with the rainfly in place. At the same time, the rainfly still protects the tent really well, and notice that most of the rainfall drips straight to the ground without touching the black tent flooring too much. The moderate rain continued for many hours, even into the night. So, at night, after one hour of heavy rain as well as five hours of moderate rain, I decided to check in on the tent. After opening up the vestibule, tying it back, and being as careful as possible not to let the water drip into the tent, I found that there was not a single drop of water inside the tent. And that's after one hour of heavy rain and many hours of light to moderate rain. Even the corners, which are usually quite vulnerable to rain, did not leak at all. The next morning, it was actually still raining. When the rain stopped, I decided to check in on the tent again, and it was still completely dry. I checked all the corners again and again, and none of them let in a single drop of water. The mesh inside the tent was still completely dry as well, so the vent didn't let any water in too. The flooring was also completely dry. I also checked the rainfly, and from the inside, it was completely dry as well. Overall, I am very, very impressed with this Mountain Ultra one-person tent. I didn't add any additional waterproofing myself, and this tent held up to not just one hour of heavy rain, but more than 12 hours of light to moderate rain consecutively after the heavy rain. And yet, it has no signs of weakness, no signs of leaking, and even dampness anywhere inside the tent. Nothing at all. I'll definitely give this tent a huge thumbs up for its weatherproofing for sure. But that's not all I tested for this tent. For a full review and more tests on this Teton Sports Mountain Ultra one-person tent, check out this video right here. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.